It's Friday the 30th of January. From the MEN newsroom, this is Channel M's Lunchtime News, and these are today's headlines. After the no vote, what next? Greater Manchester's councils meet to discuss Plan B without the congestion charge. There isn't a Plan B. You've made it quite clear there isn't a, a Plan B. Quite frankly, we haven't got a Plan B. It doesn't matter how many plans you've got. It's, it's back over to the politicians, I think, on this one. Also coming up, goodbye to a famous landmark as a hospital in Salford prepares to move. People must have lost real, sort of, you know, really loved, cherished children. But even so, there was an atmosphere of just happiness about the place. And leaves on the line, but not for much longer as Network Rail plans a mass cull of trees that's angering protesters. There have been trees on this, this line for 169 years. And in the year 2009, Network Rail want to chop them all down purely to save money. Good afternoon. Our top story. It's almost two months since Greater Manchester rejected the congestion charge by a massive majority. At the time, we were told there was no plan B. Now, talks are on to come up with exactly that. Ben Bland has our top story. There isn't a plan B. You've made it quite clear there isn't a, a plan B, which is why we're going to have to have that period of reflection. Quite frankly, we haven't got a plan B. It doesn't matter how many plans you've got, if you haven't got the money to carry them out, that's the problem. I will be calling on all the leaders of Greater Manchester to immediately lobby government for this money, because it is not fair what they have done to us. You know, there was one plan, no alternative, and that simply can't be right. It's, it's back over to the politicians, I think, on this one, because, again, you know, our members are complaining day after day about the, the slowness of getting around, getting the goods around Greater Manchester and getting people into work. And that's exactly what the politicians are doing in there today. The leaders of all ten councils across Greater Manchester are meeting to discuss ways to raise money to invest and improve public transport. The main ideas focus on businesses, the argument being that it's they who will benefit most from the improvements. One idea is simply to raise business rates. The problem with that, though, is that some businesses may feel they're being unfairly penalised. Another idea is to introduce a workplace parking levy. Under that scheme, businesses that provide free parking to employees would be charged per space that they provide. But at a time when businesses are struggling with the economic downturn, some may pass that cost on to employees, on to customers, or even withdraw the perk of free parking altogether. After Greater Manchester said a resounding no to the idea of congestion charging, the politicians told us there was no plan B. One thing they seem to agree on now, though, is that they've got to come up with something. Thanks very much, Ben. Well, we'll have much more from the outcome of that meeting in our early evening news with Andy Crane from five o'clock tonight. Workers at the struggling JJB Sports in Wigan are waiting to see what two major banks will do about the firm's crippling debts. Shares in the firm tumbled when bosses revealed that lending from three banks, including Barclays and HBOS, would cost it an extra £8.3 million in fees. A deadline for future funding arrangements has been set for later, though a, pro a planned protest by staff outside Barclays in London has been postponed to allow time to find a new deal. Two men have been arrested after a body was found at a flat in Longsight. Police were called early this morning following reports a man had died there. He's not yet been identified, but the pair in custody, who are 27 and 39, are being questioned on suspicion of murder. Protests in support of oil refinery workers are escalating this lunchtime. More than 1,000 have gone on strike across the country in a row over jobs being given to foreign construction workers at a plant in North Lincolnshire. Hundreds of staff at the Fiddler's Ferry plant in Warrington have down tools in sympathy with their colleagues along with others in Scotland and on Teesside. Four men held over the murder of a talented young footballer here in Manchester have been released on bail. It's a year since Holton McCollin was shot in the head by masked men at a takeaway in Stretford. A £20,000 reward has been offered to find his killers. Those who've been questioned are in their 20s and 30s and are due to report back to officers in April. People in Salford are getting ready to say goodbye to a landmark hospital in Pendlebury. The Royal Manchester Children's Hospital is moving to the city centre. Georgia Calvin-Smith has been speaking to former staff and patients. 
The Royal Manchester Children's Hospital was founded in 1829 and was the first hospital in Britain dedicated to looking after only sick children. But its importance has never just been about its medical successes. The current building has been a landmark in Salford for over a century and the hospital is one of Greater Manchester's best loved institutions. People must have lost real sort of, you know, really loved, cherished children. But even so, there was an atmosphere of just happiness about the place. Elsa Crano's father was an orthopaedic surgeon at the hospital during the 50s. She remembers that nurses worked so hard to make kids at home that at times they didn't even have to be ill to be on the receiving end of TLC. A fact Ailsa and her sisters once took advantage of when visiting the wards with their father. When it came time to going home, my father did a roll call and found my sister and I sitting in, the, in our cots, tucking into Christmas lunch without, I may add, Brussels sprouts, with a pile of gifts at the end of the bed. The hospital will be closing its doors for the last time later this year and moving its services to a new £20 million unit at St Mary's Hospital in central Manchester. It's not the first time the hospital's been earmarked for closure. In the early 1960s, the Ministry of Health suggested its closure to form a larger children's unit at Hope Hospital. But investment in a new biochemistry lab bought the RMCH a reprieve that would allow it to continue to offer, if not healing, then at least hope to sick children and their parents for almost another 50 years. Ruby was uh, diagnosed with a brain tumour two years ago. With adults, I suppose, it's um, you're there just to get better. With kids, you've got their education to think of and, um, and obviously they have to play, they have to have fun as well. So I think they're very geared towards that. The hospitals touched the lives of countless people at times when they were at their most vulnerable. Its closure will mean the new unit will have a hard act to follow, but staff are confident that they will. It's the continuity of staff and the consultants have been here a long time. Then, in effect, we're able to continue the care in the local area. You know, the, the spirit of the hospital will be maintained in the new build. Royal Manchester Children's Hospital will hold bittersweet memories for those who have passed through its doors over the centuries. But when it relocates in June, its history will not be forgotten. Rather, it will serve as a foundation for the future. Georgia Calvin Smith, Channel M News. Exercise classes for toddlers have started in one part of Greater Manchester. The sessions in Stockport are believed to be the first in the country aimed at children so young. They include sessions of dance, stretches and jumping around. It's part of a plan to reduce obesity levels. Statistics show a quarter of four-year-olds and a third of 11-year-olds around here are too fat. Bosses at a mental health unit here in Manchester are reportedly investigating how patients managed to escape four times within four weeks. Anxious friends and relatives of the three patients on Oxford Ward at the city's Royal Infirmary say they're worried about poor security on the unit. Fire investigators are at the scene of a blaze that's destroyed much of a house in Crumpsall. The blaze broke out yesterday evening and there have been fears some people were trapped inside the semi-detached property. It was later found to be empty. Crews were there all night. A group of cheerleaders have danced their way into an Ashton Primary School to celebrate a special sporting occasion. The dancers from the Miami Dolphins American football team are showing off their skills ahead of Sunday's Super Bowl final. Let's get ready to rumble! Let's get ready, ready, let's get ready, ready, let's get ready to rumble! Watch us wreck the mic, watch us wreck the mic, watch us wreck the mic! Psych. We've been dancing with the Miami Dolphins and we've been learning some moves. We're here at um, an elementary school and we're teaching some of the kids some of the dances that we do in order to celebrate for Super Bowl and Super Bash, which are two events that are going on this weekend. We came here last year for a game and it's just so much fun to see a new whole set of people just get interested in our sport. Football is our number one sport, so we just want to spread it to everyone. I like it because the, the team leaders are really good at dancing and they're really, they've learned lots of new moves. A very popular report, that one, not least with the men here in the office. Among them, Sam Goodman, who's here now with the sports headlines. Thank you very much, James, yes.
Well, it's looking highly unlikely that Manchester City will sign the Blackburn striker Roque Santa Cruz as the club have had yet another bid projected. The Blackburn manager Sam Allardyce won't sell the Paraguayan because he'll now have little time to find a replacement before the transfer window closes at 5pm on Monday. On the other hand, it's looking more promising that the Blues will sign the Newcastle goalkeeper Shea Given, who has just handed in a transfer request. City have made an improved offer for the Ireland international who spent 11 years at St James's Park. Well, after the Bolton manager Gary Megson labelled his fans disgusting after he received abuse following the two-all draw with Blackburn on Wednesday. He can be expecting more backlash from the fans as, Kevin, as captain Kevin Nolan is having his medical at Newcastle ahead of a £4.5 million move. The 26-year-old has been at the club for more than nine years and has made over 290 appearances. Well, over to rugby and the Sale Sharks are away to the Worcester Warriors in the Guinness, Guinness Premiership tomorrow as they continue their push for the title. Well, we've had two shockers the last two two home games against them, and, and probably the most disappointing performance, and especially the last time, was a, a demoralising performance that we put in, um, and hopefully we can put that straight this weekend. They're one of them teams that come and try to spoil spoil a game in terms of what the opposition are going to do. So they'll they'll try and spoil all our ball, and 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 bring it down to almost say almost bring it to their level if you if you get what I'm saying, because they want to play a slow game mm. where it's set piece orientated, uh, pick and goes make us lose our discipline and then sort of kick for goals, kick the points, keep us in the corners and wait for us again to make, make mistakes. And it's, you know, it, they, they're very well, very good at doing that. The games are, you know what I mean, thick and fast now, it's, every game's massive and you say that all the time, but now it's, like, the league is so close, it's never really been like this, where you can, six or seven can, two wins can get you in the top four, top two, and uh, and we know if we lose the next two, then, then we'll be right out of it, but... Consequently, we want to win the next two and, and be right in the mix. Well, yesterday, Ricky Hatton confirmed his fight with Manny Pacquiao will be going ahead. And at the press conference, the hitman added some new faces to Team Hatton, including rising star and surely a future English champion, Levin's Hume's Joe Murray. Yeah, very pleased. Um, a lot of people made comments in the past that I'm the most successful amateur in, in uh, Manchester. And I'd say Hatton's the most successful pro in, in the, the game. So I think it's like a match made in heaven. It means everything. It means uh, I can't wait to get get out and start my professional debut and like start get get to my brother's level and win British titles and like do things like that. So it's the start of everything for Joe Murray, really. Yeah, to be perfectly honest, when I actually saw him training in the gym, you know, I was even more surprised at uh, how talent how talented he is. I mean, I don't think anybody has seen the best of of Joe Murray yet, you know, and that's saying something with what he's achieved and now he's gone to the Olympics and stuff like that. But he's a youngster who'll get better and better and mature, you know, and he'll, he'll, he'll go into you know, a, a stronger lad. But uh, he's got an abundance of talent, and I think there's no, there's no, there's no end to what to what Joe could achieve. I, there's no reason why Joe can't be sat in this seat in a few years' time doing this similar interview, to be honest. And in ice hockey, the Manchester Phoenix were in action last night in the first leg of their knockout cup tie. And they saw off an injury hit Hull Stingrays 4-0. Goalie Stephen Murray was man of the match after keeping a clean sheet for the second game running. And finally, in cricket, England's bowlers were humiliated before the close of play. On day one of their match against the West Indies A-team, the home side finished on 343 for two. James Anderson and Kevin Peterson took the wickets. Well, that's all the sport from me for now. Join me again later this evening. I'll have all the build-up to this weekend's sport. Thanks very much, Sam. Lots more still to come on Friday's lunchtime news, including the row over a cull of trees by Network Rail and why the latest thing playing out at many theatres seems to be the credit crunch. The finances are on a knife edge, like every theatre. The only thing is other theatres can go to central government and say, we're in trouble, give us a bit more. We haven't got that facility. Welcome back to Friday's Lunchtime News here on Channel M. An update on the main headlines on the way before one o'clock and you can always catch up online at channelm.co.uk. Plenty of reports on there right now, including reaction to new guidance for mums and dads not to give any alcohol to under 15s and pictures from the Home Secretary Jackie Smith's visit to Manchester promoting the benefits of ID cards. That's at channelm.co.uk. Next, thousands of trees, some of them over 160 years old, could be chopped down because their falling leaves are causing disruption to train services. It's left residents outraged as Beverly Walkton's been finding out. 
This is Heaton Chapel train station and all of these wonderful trees make up Heaton Moor conservation area. But the land belongs to Network Rail and they say falling leaves from these trees are causing major disruptions on the train lines. Now they want to chop them down and that's causing outrage with residents, isn't it? Why shouldn't they chop them down? There have been trees on this, this line for 169 years and in the year 2009 Network Rail want to chop them all down purely to save money. Now, what do they add to the area? A lot. They add a lot to the residents. The residents are actually up in arms. Everyone's up in arms about it. It's a nice immunity to have. In summer, it's lovely. Don't, don't go along the line of leaves on the line. That doesn't work. They're mainly silver birch and the very, very tiny leaves. OK, well, one resident who wants to take further action on this is Phil. You're planning on taking them to court. We might have to do this, unfortunately. I'm Phil Robotham, chairman of the Heat, Heat and More Conservation Area Residence Group. And there are badger sets on these lines. And there's, there's bats at roost in this area. It's illegal to disturb badger sets or bats under the Wildlife Act. And uh, Network Rail claim they've no evidence of badger sets. Well, we have evidence, and if they continue to do this work, I'll attempt to take a prosecution out on the chief executive, Mr Ian Coucher, um, because we think it's disgraceful they're going to demolish all the wildlife on, on these lines, which have been here for 169 years. OK, well, thank you. It's clearly very upsetting to residents. Well, Network Rail has assured me this morning that they are reviewing the situation and they haven't ruled out a U-turn on this. Back to the studio. Thanks very much, Bev. The Lib Dems have won the Didsbury West Council by-election. Leanne Williams got more than 55% of the vote with a majority of 801. There was more than a 3% swing from Labour and a 6% swing from the Tories. Party bosses say if that was repeated at a general election nationally, the Lib Dems would get an extra 33 MPs. The cartoon character Morph has had a makeover. The plasticine character and his sidekick Chaz are celebrating his 30th birthday and the men's magazine Esquire spent three weeks creating several tiny outfits for him, including this one. They say it's also a tribute to Tony Hart, who helped make him famous, who died earlier on this month. Now, if you're planning on heading out this weekend, here's a suggestion. You might want to try one of your nearby theatres. It seems there's a new drama on in many of them. It's called The Credit Crunch, and it's less of a thriller and more a chiller, as Kevin Duffy's been finding out in this tale of two theatres. Oh. <laughs> music fades, music fades. Peter on piano. Over in one corner of Greater Manchester's theatre land, rehearsals are in full swing. However, for some performance venues, it looks as though the show is over for good. At Tameside Hippodrome, for example, the doors are sealed, and there are fears that the local council may be planning to sell the building. Tameside Hippodrome is more than a century old, and the local council says it needs more than £3 million spending on it to bring it back into use. And the council says it simply hasn't got that money, and that, it would appear, is the end of the matter. Former Brookside actress Sue Jenkins performed and produced at the Hippodrome. I think in the climate that we're in at the moment, the one thing people need is entertainment and, and that feel-good factor. And apart from the fact that 12,000 people plus have actually filled in a petition to the council to say, please keep our 100-year-old theatre, you know, our heritage, uh, part of our, our, our... Well, the heart of the city, that's what people have said to me. It's the heart of, of Ashton Town Centre. And it's not just Tameside Hippodrome feeling the pinch. Over here at the Garrick in Trafford, financial pressure means there's plenty of drama happening off stage. That's because Trafford Council is considering stopping its £20,000 a year grant. It's not quite £3 million, but it's just as worrying, says Treasurer Jeff Noor. The finances are on a knife edge, like every theatre. The only thing is other theatres can go to central government and say, we're in trouble, give us a bit more. We haven't got that facility. It looks as though the paying public is going to have to play a bigger part if they want to stop this drama from having a sad ending. Kevin Duffy for Channel M News. Well, staying with culture and entertainment, time now for our weekly look at what's coming up over the weekend. With us is Neil Sowerby from citylife.co.uk. Neil, thanks for coming in. The big event this weekend, Chinese New Year. Year of the Ox. 60,000 people expected. They're dusting off the 175-foot-long dragon costume, which I hope's in good, good nick this year. And 75 stalls, lots of, lots of food, lots of stuff. Lovely. Yeah, I'm free. Sounds like there'll be uh, lots of colourful things going on as well. The, the big film this weekend... 
You remember Kate Winslet at the Golden Globes? Hyperventilating. Well, it's that movie, Revolutionary Road, reunited with Leonardo DiCaprio from the first time she first went over the top in Titanic. Uh, and it's a different kind of film. DiCaprio's as good as her, in fact. It's disaffected suburbanites in 50s America. Yeah, obvious award winner. May, may get the Oscars too, so she can get into third gear then. Oh, well, there'll be a lot of people hoping to go out and see that. Thanks very much for coming in, Neil. Much more about those events and anything else you might want to do this weekend on the website, citylife.co.uk. Do check that out. Time now to take a check at what's happening with the weekend's weather. Here's Michelle Eagleton. <laughs> Well, unfortunately, it has been a gloomy day across Greater Manchester. That rain's been on and off all morning, and it's been very cold as well. Highs are between 6 and 7, so do make sure if you've got plans this afternoon, wrap up nice and warm. Take that broiler with you, because that rain is set in for the day, I'm afraid. And some blustery wind creeping in from the southerly direction. We actually saw it about 9, 10 o'clock this morning, as you can see from our picture. And uh, really a mixed bag for you out there, because also we have seen a few sunny spells as well this morning. Not so much this afternoon. We are going to be playing with some heavy cloud and that's going to be in for the remainder of the day like I say those showers if you are going out tonight tonight make sure that you do uh, wrap up nice and warm and they're gonna be plaguing us overnight although should dry up for Saturday we're seeing a mixture of sunshine and cloud for Saturday Sunday is gonna be mainly cloudy and dry with highs of five degrees and then Monday unfortunately that rain is on its way back and it's in on uh, Tuesday as well with a bit of sunshine mixed in for good measure Finally for now, some news about us. From this autumn, you'll be able to tune in to watch Channel M on Freeview. It's been announced we're the only bidders for the new licence to broadcast to Greater Manchester from November. More homes than ever before will be able to tune in, so if your friends can't, make sure you tell them that they will be able to later on in the year. The next few months will be an exciting time for us as we get ready to make that happen. And we're all looking forward to carrying on bringing you all the latest news, sport, showbiz and entertainment programmes. It really does mean that Channel M is the only place to go to find out what's happening across Greater Manchester. This is Channel M's lunchtime news this afternoon's main headlines now. Talks are on to find a plan B after December's landslide no vote against bringing in a congestion charge. All the area's councils are discussing what will happen next after the warning last year that there was no backup option. JJB staff from Wigan are waiting for news about what will happen to the firm's crippling debt. A deadline's been set for later to find a solution to the company's problems after three banks said they charge bosses more than £8 million extra for loans. A planned protest by staff in London has been postponed to try to reach an agreement. Workers from the Fiddler's Ferry plant in Warrington have joined growing protests in support of oil refinery workers in Lincolnshire. They've walked out to demonstrate against jobs being given to foreign construction workers. Do let us know if you have any comments on those stories or anything else in today's lunchtime news. You can drop us a text to treble eight two one. Start your message with the word news or email newsdesk at channelm.co.uk. Much more on all those stories and the rest of the day's headlines with Andy Crane tonight from five o'clock. But for now, from me and the rest of the lunchtime team, have a very good afternoon and weekend. Bye-bye for now.